Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to reverse a list manually. If you're just looking for the reverse list, you can just use the reverse method, so data.reverse. However, if you're doing this for an algorithm or data structure class, or you just wanna know a little bit more detail of how this works, that's what this video is for. Do you need help advancing your coding skills? Check out my new program, Code Breakthrough. Code Breakthrough offers hands-on learning with Python in data structures, algorithms, and interview challenges. With a supportive community and regular new content, Code Breakthrough will help you get hired or advance your career. For a limited time launch special, use the link in the description to get 20% off your subscription. See you there. So we're gonna be doing it manually and we're gonna be building off the principles of what we taught in the previous video, which is how to swap data. In Python, you can swap data by putting two variables on the left of an assignment and then putting them in the opposite order on the right hand of the assignment. So let's go through an example where we are trying to swap this here with this here. This is index one, this is index negative two, which is why we have data of index, which is one, and then negative index minus one, which should give us negative two. We can use this setup in a loop to pretty much swap one element at a time in a loop going through each one until everything is swapped. So this is what it's gonna look like. Let's get rid of these prints here. We're not gonna need those anymore and we'll get rid of that there. We will just say for index in range, and what's the range gonna be? We're gonna do length of data divided by two. We only need to go through half of the list, otherwise we'll end up swapping everything back to where it started, which we don't wanna do. Now we're using two forward slashes here because we want to use integer division. If we ended up just doing one here, we're actually gonna get an error and it says, well, First off, make sure you're not dumb and forget the colon. So run it now and it says flow object cannot be interpreted as an integer. So the range is expecting an integer, but when we do division, it makes it a float. So if we want to make it an integer, we just do two forward slashes. So that's gonna crop off anything after a decimal. So if we had 3.5 as an example, it's just going to be three. However, it should still be the same. We don't have to worry about an odd number because if there is an odd number, that middle element just stays where it's at. So as an example, let me add an element here. In this situation, we have an odd number where we have four on the left and four on the right. We only have to worry about those four because this middle one is going to stay exactly in the same spot. So running this here, it should work. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna print data afterwards just to make sure everything is reversed. And reading it from the right, we get A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So everything is in the same exact order, it's just in the opposite direction. So that is how you reverse a list. It should work for even or odd list lengths. So if I got rid of one of these here, now we have an even number, we run it and it still works exactly the same way. Now, just as a side note, in terms of algorithm analysis, this is going to run in big O of N because we're just doing a few operations for each element in the list. If the list size doubles, we're not doing exponentially more work. We're just doing double the work. And for space complexity, this is an in-place algorithm. We are not going outside and creating another list. We're just modifying it from within. So stay tuned for the next video because we're gonna review everything we've talked about since the last section. And it might just help conclude everything and make it stick in your brain. So I'd encourage you to go through that review. I'll see you in the next video. 